module project. So there's a module for each library that they need because most of the libraries they have to provide themselves on Windows. Oh, okay, but not on, on, the, on syst normal systems, they use system libraries, right? Correct. Okay. Windows is always a challenging thing to support. Um, well, they don't have a package manager yet. They might eventually, though. Technically, Server 2008 R2 does. But only for Microsoft components. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this might actually take uh, a little bit to run. So the I'll downloading the uh, the dependencies. Well, it's actually uh, it's already downloaded. Oh, yeah, so okay. White House is not being nasty to me at home at the moment. This is my home server that I remoted into. Um, so we'll actually start the Git clone while we're at it. I download a registry entry that makes it use the solarized color scheme. <laughs> or, or, you know, you could use Dylan's approach, whatever, but you, you, can, you can increase that blue. I always have difficulty reading the comments and uh, the lines yeah. here. That's actually that the horrible choices of colors by default putty is why, how I first found solarized. I first used it on Windows and then made everything else use it. It's pretty. Can you tell us what it is? It's a color scheme. Uh, we can talk about it some other time. It's it's meant it's designed to be very readable on any kind of screen. Um, so if you put like 180 in the green, it'll be a little brighter if that's what you're having difficulty with. Oh, I can read it just fine. Can everybody else read it? <laughs> we don't need it. It'll go white as soon as I start doing the uh, get checkout. All right, so let's make ourselves our lives easy. Go to the handy 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 wiki page. And it will say, do your first build, if I remember correctly. Donut. That's in a nicely customized media we can install as well. There we go. I guess that's another thing with the larger projects is they, they usually are, are pretty good about having good defaults on the things they're using. Um, they, they actually, all this that I'm doing right now is directly on building on Linux. So they've made, they uh, admittedly they built bent over backwards to get on any platform you want to build it on, including Windows, which is the most challenging one to build on, um, the right tools. So just a git clone. And that one will now take a little bit of time, unfortunately, because it's a large code base. And it's using oh. my lot. That's a lot of objects. How many the objects? Uh, the, not to be confused, those objects it's referring to, you can basically think files if you're not familiar so, with the Git. No, it's file fragments. Yeah, well, it could. it's in a number of different things. Well, it's going to be a very Actual large number for error from the last time they did it. Mm -hmm. Last time I did it. As the oh, that was pretty quick too. Gets older, the larger the numbers get. You can, you can. Is that that's including yeah. like all yes, those you can, you can clean up your history. Yeah, you can even rebase everything into a single commit in a, in a separate branch and forget the other branches, and they'll eventually disappear. It's not usually a problem, though. I mean, I have I've dealt with. I want. I want to see how large the dot git directory is when this finishes. If it finishes, you tried doing it at work, but then they just imported last year's branch. Are you Are you using Git at work, Bob? No. Okay, I don't think so. We're kind of sneakily uh, bringing Git in. We have a shared drive that we're or that we're using as kind of a Git repo. Yeah. I, every time I see a, uh, a a job listing in in the Tampa area for 
software telecommunications company that needs C programmers and a variety of other languages and CVS. I know pretty much who it is. Not naming names though. It's entirely possible we fired so many people about three, four months ago. It's time to start hiring to fill in all those positions people were getting rid of. We can fire some people again. Yep. I have a, new, a friend of mine at a large software company recently. It happened to him and he, I looked up their history and was like, wow, that seems to happen exactly every four years. Yep. They want churn. <laughs> they want churn because the... Oh, Entry right people now. don't cost nearly as much as the expert people. Well, when I looked it up, too, I looked up the number of people in the company. It's unrelated to your company, by the way. It's a different one. And it said they fired 12% of their workforce, which turned out to be about 800 people. And that was 800 software developers um, It's because in they don't the US. carry the engendered servant entities. Yeah. H1B? Uh, it's because American software developers, we don't have any engendered servant attitude. Or we feel like we owe them for working here. Oh, well, we will bend over backwards to make sure. No, it's 5.30. I'm out the door. Bye. I will see you at 7.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's awfully early, man, for a software developer. So what's that, 10-hour day? Yeah, it is. 7.30, 5.30? With an hour or something lunch? Oh, oh that must be nice. That's a 10-hour day. <laughs> still nine hours. That would be a two hour lunch then. Huh? With a two hour lunch, hey, that's fine. Yeah. I have to sign up for a nap and I'd a rather, lunch. I'd rather skip the lunch and go home early. Same I come in late. By night, I'll still take an hour lunch. Okay, so all the dependencies are set up. 19% of receiving the objects. And you're downloading at three, or you know, almost three megabits. That's pretty good. Especially since it was all over Brighthouse line, I'm really shocked. Dude, that's trying. What are you paying for? Which bright, which branch, which what tier of bandwidth do you have? Because that's faster than twenty by two. Twenty. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I don't think you can get twenty by two anymore. They have made everybody upgrade to uh, forty. Uh, it's 30 or 60. Okay. Well, they want me to, for, I'm paying for 40 right now, but they want me to have 60, and they say it only costs $5 more. You sure? That's how they're trying to get me to 30, and I'm like, no. <laughs> Plenty fast. Yep. You refer oh, to have, have you, speaking of this while it's downloading, have you noticed that YouTube is frequently slow unless you tunnel it through SSH? No. Okay. Hmm? Get clone? And big long URL. Are you remote it into a server you got to clone it down to? Do you want the URL? Yeah, and the IRC chat? Yeah. Okay. I keep having to copy and paste it. You should make a short URL for it. Oh, wait, it's a Git URL, isn't it? Yep. Wow, I'm not used to using those. Everything I do is over SSH. But I guess those are not public usually. Well, they were on an anonymous uh, Git server for most of their clone operations because it's so large. Oh, yeah, over SSH? Oh, my God, this would be even slower over SSH, wouldn't it? Because of the encryption. Mm -hmm. Well, the encryption's not too bad. Well, it would spike your CPU or something. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Oh, they're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Control C. Oh, wait, oops. I kind of pasted that on the wrong channel. <laughs> what channel was that? Oh, the LibreOffice dev one. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how it appears strange to <laughs> your new friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done worse things. I can't complain. <laughs> My favorite was because uh, I did the uh, Gen 2 work over the summer. It used to be before Git that, and you'll see this with some projects, that you have to go through a whole mentorship program and everything else to be able to do anything. 
the Gen 2 one used to take so long that I only really had a summer to work with them. Um, by the time I got commit access, the summer was over. So I've been doing everything via email patches. I got the access, and I was like, oh, what am I going to do with this anymore? I've got the time, I'm back in school, and got purged right back out without making a single commit at the six month mark. But um, that, that truly is the nice thing about the rise of GitHub is that um, contributing is a lot easier with a, a simple pull request. Mm -hmm. um, that actually is like the nicest thing about it. Really. <coughs> now the cool thing for well, let's let's kick off the bill. Well, let's see what's the result of the bill first. Um, the nice thing about the way LibreOffice works is anybody can set up and push code to them. But what they have set up is a tool called Garrett. So what Garrett does is. It acts like a Git, uh, a Git server. So you write your code, you push it to Garrett. Garrett takes your code, and it's a review system. So everybody can comment, review your code, look through all the changes, and only then they cherry pick it out of Garrett and shove it into the main repo, and that's how everybody gets your change. Does it have to be approved by a certain number of people, or? Well, it's anybody that's made core committer. So typically, if you've made, once you've built enough of a name for yourself, they'll promote you to core committer, and you just commit directly. But for all the random patches they get, because they get a lot of them, everything else goes to Garrett. So, so here's a random patch that somebody's worked upon. Now the other fun thing. Dot SCP. Are those C++ files? Let's find out. Um, they do not appear to be C++ files. They it would appear to be some kind of... Basic. Basic, yeah. I guess that is basic. I guess they do have basic in their database. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. Um, the other fun thing that they can do with Garrett, and they do as well, is if you'll see the Garrett bot, they have a whole continuous integration infrastructure that will take your commits, merge that into mainline, and build it. So you know automatically whether or not you could safely merge in the change or if it'll break the code base when you do so. So it's another layer of code review. Unfortunately, the change that I was working on Where did I put it? I put it in the bug list. I'm at the professional. How fast a server are you doing that on? It keeps going anywhere from between 4 and 5 megabits per second. Oh. Megabytes. Well, that's not that bad. That's about what I have at home. Uh, I know, I keep wanting to upgrade. So I can show off the latest bunch of files to all my friends and family. Which doesn't matter because they're not building new online near me. Apparently. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember where. Hold Keep on emailing them about it, Paul. Please, you're that's the. It doesn't it's probably go. because um, City Hall said no, you're not tearing up the front lawn. My front lawn's already torn up anyway, though. It's got car parts sticking out of it from the previous owners. I was speaking more along the lines of City Hall's front lawn. Uh. I found a spark plug yesterday. Have you thought about taking a metal detector? I still find random like Star Wars toys in my backyard. That's much cooler than what I find. <laughs> I find car parts too, but that was the last thing I found. Mom, my mom found a bicycle seat once. <laughs> Old rusted frame of one. Really. Never more fun than finding a bucket full of cold balloons. I'm bored. I put it. Okay. Did it finish? Yay! Yes, it's done. Give us a du-chs uh, dot git. Or h, I guess. I think you need s at least for summary. No, it'll be at the end. <coughs> That's only 1.1 gigs. 
which isn't too bad, considering the size of the code base. So each one of these is a library that open off, uh, LibreOffice has to supply with it. So you end up with fun things like the entire Postgres client libraries. Um, Do a view on that whole directory tree. Well, it's not going to need a summary at the end, is it? Oh, okay. That's more than 1.8 gigs. So then the next part becomes building it. And this is the part that we will conclude this uh, talk on because it's going to take some time. Should be like a cooking show. You should have one just finishing up. <laughs> Do you have? Well, here's the problem. Well, this is the fun thing that. Okay, so my first my first change they did with them was to add the version information when you ran the uh, binary of uh, what the source that built your your code was. The second one is they wanted to change. That's autoconf. I don't. I think it's a hand ruled version of autoconf. Uh, you just say there's a config.ac or .in file, but it is not we'll important. We'll find out in a second. Um, um, the second one is they wanted to change how their stream operators worked, which if anybody does C++ development here, those involve changing header files, and this is a core um, class. So every character you change because it was a header file, triggered a God, an eight plus hour compile. It was and it didn't even end up the approach that I was taking didn't even really end up working. Um, was that one in the easy section? That was one of the easy hacks. <laughs> <laughs> but I should but uh, easy but long. Yes, it was gonna be extremely tedious. So config.i? Uh, config.in or then config.ac? Oh, they have an AC now. Yeah, so they're using autoconf. Oh, no, they're, they're using bad auto. Go up to the top again. Android. They will get, yeah, they will get pissed on by a, uh, a GNU developer because they, um, that won't work on all platforms that autoconf supports because not all SHs support functions. See, that, that function won't work on on like Solaris 3. Well, let's put it this way. Oh. Yeah. Work on Solaris. I have written configure.ac files. <laughs> the ones that I have at my work tend to be 50 lines. And that one is? 12, oh, just about 12,000. They win. So it's, it's a little large. <laughs> that's longer, than, that's probably longer than some novels. They have one or two. Not even one, no. Do they, have, they don't have a make file that in. They don't make file that in. Oh, make file that in is means they're only using um they're only using the substitution things from autoconf. But they're not using the, the auto make stuff. They are doing something that is frowned upon though. Recursive make? Yes. Auto make does that though. Auto make does recursive make. No, you can use it without recursive make. Really? That's good. I didn't know that. It's way faster. And complete build or complete uh, thing that describes the build dependencies. Yes. All right. RDB. Make dev install. Um, quick, give me a screen command. You just did it. Yes. So this will be finishing up uh, about tomorrow. Well, the first thing it does is it downloads all of the uh, libraries that it needs that were included um, by default. So that's what you're seeing right now. Is, uh, it actually w gets it all. Thankfully, it all manages to somehow work. Not uh, pre-built? No, they're not pre-built. So it's going to download and build them. Uh, so what ends up happening is, depending on what you're developing, if you're adding, if you're doing main things like UI development, the builds are pretty quick. And there's techniques to speed up the build even faster. 
um, if you're doing something crazy like I tried to do for my second change and change core header files, my recommendation is to pick either a smaller project or don't do this on a laptop. Because <laughs> all this development was done on this, I was doing on this laptop, and it is extremely slow. It's not available. Huh? It's not available. So time for a sword fight, huh? Yes, to reference the XKCD. Um, any questions, comments, heckles? Uh, is uh, OpenOffice and LibreOffice, you said that OpenOffice has gotten, uh, that Oracle has released it and given it to Apache? Yes. Uh, is there any chance of those getting remerged? Uh, it honestly, it doesn't seem that way. Um, they've both gone their separate routes. Um, the Apache OpenOffice project had, well, because it went to Apache, they had to convert from Git, because that's what uh, OpenOffice was on at Sun. They had finally moved to Git. They had to convert back to Subversion. So that took them six months or more. So, so they're really big on eating their own dogs with that Apache, aren't they? Yes. Not only that, they had to remove all GPL and LGPL libraries from the code base. So Apache's really eat their own dog food. Yeah. Um, is their license incompatible with the GPL or something? Apache uh, the thing? Apache 2.0 license is compatible with GPL version 3 or above. Okay. Um, not 2. That's so it's uh, so the, the GPL 3 is technically more free because it's that service crap, isn't it? It depends on which kind of GPL you use. Okay. Um, the, G the regular GPL 3.0 means you can't TiVo a system, mm. um, but it's not as nasty as the Afro GP GPL. The Afro GPL says even if you're providing like a web service, you have to provide the sor full source code okay. to your web application, which makes most companies run away, run away screaming. There's a. Uh, but you only have to provide source code for the application to use, not as a matter of approval. Like anything changes to the application, right? Well, it's let's say you let's say you're using the Afro GPL, and let's say WordPress is covered by it. You'd have to give the source code here for WordPress install as part of your uh, use of WordPress. Now, WordPress isn't covered by the, G the Afro GPL. But if it was, that's what would happen. So I just could tarball the WordPress version as it is, and then the aspect just because it's 